Hello everybody, welcome to the round of 16 match between Bright with Elven Union in blue and Barking Mark with Dark Elves in red. Bright won the toss, chose to kick and uh, looking at these teams it's pretty crazy. Bright is 200 TV down, he's got a wizard and he's got a Bloodweiser keg and yet he has this amazing one turner. And he's got 12 players and he's got skills everywhere. He's, you know, it's like, it's a completely reasonable team. And then, not really much worse than the Dark Elf team. But the Dark Elf team, still only got 12 players. He's got a Garda. Got to move up, move down. And it's like, it's kind of, I don't even think he's got the better team really. And yet he's two, got 200 more TV. So, I think this is looking pretty bad. For the Dark Elves. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Hello, Stradley K. No, yeah, you, you, there's not there's not too many wizards about. Because because of the because of the cap, right? Because you can make your team seventeen hundred, it's generally best to make your team seventeen hundred. It's generally better to not have a wizard. But to have a good team. Oh punter. It's his knockdowns. Rustled. Uh, it's really weird how like unexciting the dark elves are. Maybe I'm just underestimating, you know, the amount of bludge. But what what do the elves have? One, two, Kaz. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Six blodgers. The pearls have got six blodgers. And the dark elves. Six. Five. <laughs> oh no, they had another one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so that's seven. It's actually had nine. No, eight. They had eight. But that's, you know, it's six versus eight isn't that much, is it? It's kind of not worth a wizard. And then especially when they've got this plus edge, right? Plus edge is 40 TV. And that's an incredible one turn edge, one plus. Add one plus is a weird stat, isn't it? Because the others tell you what you need, like a two plus or a three plus. But one plus, I can't fail to roll a one plus. It's kind of, <laughs> kind of sounds stupid, doesn't it, as an idea? In that regard, the uh, agility table made more sense. Pow puts three players on, quite like putting three players on one player like that. Dodges away. Errata, errata. So he's just leaving the uh, higher AV sidesteppers on. But I still quite like leaving a player on like that, honestly. Uh, yeah, okay, let's hover over these players. We're, we're in a replay, so we've got, you know, we've got the time, and all the time in the world. Blodge, tackle, sidestep, blitzer, so pretty good. The other one is just a rubbish line up. But uh, really good blitzer KO'd. And uh, I'll put the circles on for a few turns for people who like the circles. It seems a few people, well, a few people are commenting, commenting on the YouTube saying that they would like the circles. But of course, that just means that, that could mean that everybody who likes the circles has commented. And nobody who hates the circles has commented, so it doesn't really mean that people want circles, does it? Um, I find them very, very ugly. Incredibly ugly. And, uh... <laughs> well, don't be mean, Maud Ready. It's a big, big knockdown. I mean, I can see it being tough to tell that models apart and stuff and uh, so I get it I get I get that some people want it but I think it's 
too much, right? I think it's too much for most people. So I'll just try and leave it on for a couple of turns and then get rid of it. And then you can use those turns to identify them yourself if you want. Like the catchers have got white hair, haven't they? <laughs> Stuff like that. Blitzes are yellow. Right, that's enough. <laughs> now you should know which of the like, they've got they've got different poses and everything, haven't they? Yeah, Stradik here, the, uh, that was the the thing, wasn't it? Survivor, is it survivorship bias? Something like that. Um, it was the planes, wasn't it? The planes in the, uh, in the war that came back with damaged wings or whatever. So, you should armour the ones that didn't come back. <laughs> Riddled with bullet holes. Quite, it's funny that, isn't it? Because it's like both interesting, yet unbelievably obvious when you think about it. When you give it more than a moment's thought, you're like, oh yeah. But at first you're like, oh, oh, this is a dangerous hit, isn't it? After already screening, doesn't doesn't go forward. Oh well, got got. You know, I guess maybe he was going to foul him, right? I guess maybe he was going to foul. He's got the dirty player there, so the problem is if you if you sidestep to here, you get fouled. Big old gang foul, so size set there to not get fouled. But the problem is this one gets fouled instead. But luckily for Barking Mark, right fails his dodge and doesn't get the foul. Ah. Yes, that's fair enough, Daddy. I, yes, I also get that as well, because it's always funny to see, you know, somebody posting something. And uh, like saying, well, I have done really well with two reroll undead, and it's like, yeah, but you're Malmere, <laughs> so <laughs> of course you have done. <laughs> so yes, that is definitely a thing. Yeah, I did. So I didn't know. I didn't know that's Radike, but yes, I can completely uh, understand that. Yeah, hello, Christopher B. Nope, makes the dodges. So yeah, that was a big. Big gap there, wasn't there? Um, Bright made a good formation to stop going here, and a, a gang foul, but that last dodge out left a gaping hole, which uh, Barking Mark has exploited. All about exploiting gaping holes. Oh, we've come in for the strip. Gets it. Perfect scatter. Funny enough, I would have gone here, but it's a bit dangerous, isn't it? And then that would have been an even better scatter. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? All those players, and yet still made it relatively easy to come in and hit the ball. <laughs> oh, God, the, the add one plus guy comes in, gets it, fucks off. Wow. <laughs> it's ridiculous, isn't it? Now he's got it in the cage. That's crazy. Right, let's go back. Yeah, that was too easy, wasn't it? This is where the stripper is. Is there another stripper? No. So there's one strip ball in the entire team. There's also a rackler. So there's a rackler and a strip ball. And honestly, either way, they can get in, right? You can get in the front with a rackle, or you can get in the side it but both way like that's just unacceptable right but the ball could have been here and it's like way stronger takes a like a five plus to get in there it's like so much better big back there or like maybe the guard could have been one forward that would have also been way better right wait there's not a dodge in there there's not a dodge what there's not a dodge <laughs> So that's obviously unforgivable. I just like assumed that it was here. I just assumed it was here and it was a four plus dodge. It was just an instant hit. I mean, so that's obviously a huge mistake. But it's it, even if this was here, it's still weak, right? Even if this witch elf is here where she like should have been, it's still too weak. This this guy needs to be one for it, and then you can come in the bottom. This needs to like go back to here. I think. I think the ball needs to be back here. Um, yeah, I think the ball had to be back here. It's really weird to have 
to make a knight even a dodge. But even if it's a, even if it's a four plus dodge, it's too easy, right? And then yeah, it's just so easy. There we go. Flip me. What a mistake by Barking Mark. It's a funny name he's got at least. There's a one up, but it's got sidesteps, so it's a one into one. Gets the pow, and then catches the scatter. Oh my goodness. So a bit of luck there for uh, Bright, but still, I mean, Barking Mark can have no complaints realistically um, after letting his opponent strip the ball for free. Oh, the Dublis goals. And he's out of rerolls, he used his last reroll getting the ball. Oh, oh man. Oh man. How is. How has Barking Mark got away with this? Yeah, the dodging needs to be a 5 plus, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And you know, like, if not, finger bus, guard, things like this making it an uphill as well. But 4 plus for a 1D was too easy. And that wasn't even a 4 plus. <laughs> Scores early though, turn 7. Couldn't really protect it, so this is giving Bright the chance for the 2 1 grind. I don't actually hate going in early that much, right? Because his one turn is so so good. I guess it depends how many sidesteps you've got. He's got a lot of sidesteps, so I actually hate this. <laughs> actually hate this because um, with the sidesteps, he could have stopped the one turn, maybe. Could have at least tried to stop the one turn. With so much sidestep. That gives Bright a, a re-roll for the two turn. Which is invaluable, isn't it? Instantly uses it. Oh my goodness. Imagine if he hadn't got the, the brilliant coaching. He'd have just lost the ball. A million percent. And, and honestly, like scoring on turn 7, you're better off scoring on turn 6 and turn 7, right? It is the absolute worst time to score because if he'd scored on turn 6, you'd have had... Imagine if he'd scored on turn 6 and then he had... Uh, he, that was a fail and he could have just scored and then turn up. So yeah, if you ever think you can't stall it out till turn 8, don't be afraid to go in on turn 6. Like if you've got a team like this, so at least it gives you a chance of counter scoring. So there we go, we've got the sideline cage. Got sidesteppers, all sidestep. I wouldn't say it's the easiest sack. But, um, oh, especially not when you double one. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the fact they all had side step and stuff, it, you know, it wasn't, wasn't a million percent the easiest thing. But, yeah, go, go, rolling, rolling double ones, very uh, bad decision to roll double one there. Overall, I guess, can't be too upset after that horrible, horrible misplay of not not protecting the ball at all. Could have uh, set up a little bit better versus the Blitz than this, right? Yeah, I don't like this setup at all. But gets away with it. It's another secret to good health coaching. Um, 
Um, also, don't don't uh, just base everybody so everyone gets smashed. It's pretty good as well. Yeah, the perfect. Well, not perfect, is it? What is it? Um. <laughs> I like this. I like not carrying on the uh, on the edge one, so you've got the option of handing off to him. And if they do something stupid to sack the ball, then uh, at least it's not your catcher that finds. Of course, the bad thing is you've got to protect two players instead of one. But it's all right. In front of the old man's pretty much worked, didn't it? So he should be carrying on all mansing, really. Like that's his advantage, right? Armor eight versus armor seven. He's already half mansed, so just uh, this guy could have had two on him as well. Very easy to clear him and get a two deep. For a stun. And yes, well here we see here we see the finger bus protecting the catcher as well. Dual purpose. Those who we'd like to hit with, and neither can really get around one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, G5, G5. So, gotta try and, uh, you know, the fact that he's kicking and uh, he's gotta think he's like on the ropes, right? He's, he's definitely favourite to lose this game now, right? With, uh, right with the ball. So, he's gotta try and think about how he can get a wrestle or tackle ball sack. He's got to be obsessed by ball sacks at the moment. I think it's fair to say. I think we're just going to dodge the ball carrier on the uh, good player. State. Well played. Good decision to not stake. A f instant full power. Instant and full. Waste of a guard. Oh, I, I sorry. Here's the thing, right? If you're going to put three guys on this guy, put the third one here, right? So he has to three two away instead of just two plus one. Or like put two of him there and there. Don't put like this guy could have just been here. Don't put him so he can just two plus out. Crazy, you put three guys and going just two plus away. Really weird. I get that it makes it harder to hit anybody and stuff, but like at least position them to make it difficult for him. Yes, I would have I would have jammed the guard in like the, the guard was wasted, right? The guard could have been in here. Things, uh, all trickier. Oh, Reroll comes in. Maybe this turn, the guard is getting jammed in. 
Got to be very wary of the uh, handoff right at the back. That's the, that's the big danger you've got to think about that. That catcher going anywhere and doing anything. Oh, we're going to surf the catcher. Doesn't have sidestep. A full pow, no sir. You'll do nothing. There's the hand off. Shoes. Seems a little bit early to do this, especially as he was going to GFI as well. Doesn't seem like amazing payoff either. I don't really like this too much. Base wasn't changed at all. I'd have just been quite happy moving the cage up to here, and then maybe trying for a cutback next turn. It would have got him in range, like he's. Oh, he is in range, isn't he? <laughs> but in non-GFI range, you can always fail GFIs, can't you? It's also down to one reroll, which is never a good place to be. We've gone for the sideline cage again. Mm. I passed Christopher B. Double rush. Lots of dice rolls here from Diamond. Not Diamond, sorry, Bright. Misspoke. Sorry. Apologies. Oh. Oh, there we go. Tackle on this guy. Gets wrestled. <laughs> Pushes him. He hasn't had the best dice, has he? Barking Mark. But, um, but again, like the, the biggest thing was the not caging the ball <laughs> so ultimately if you make a mistake like that you can't have too many compounds this is interesting isn't it the uh the guard in here guard and tackle but should be able to make something happen Supposed to jump this block and then the jump. Oh, easy. It was a three plus, could have failed, couldn't it? And another turn seven score, so two turns for the Dark Owls to score. Not great at two turns, are they, Dark Elves? While they, they tend to do the best in progression of the Elves, the fact that they don't have a great one turn, uh, great, well, they don't have a one turn, unless they get, you know, really specialised players, and they don't really have a good, good two turn either, unless they get really specialised players. Oh! Like they don't have the dedicated throw, do they? So you could have a like you could have a run with like your twelfth or thirteenth player at ITV. But the fact that you don't have like a 
a good and even then it's like shit because so you don't have a good dedicated thrower and you've only got movement seven so you need a double move up guy which again takes like loads of spp and stuff but yeah now they get a three turn thanks to the uh timeout well, they haven't got very far have they they haven't got very far in turn one. Good job they had three turns, not a two turns, because if this was a two turn, it was a terrible attempt. <laughs> and here we see the classic elf screen defense. Obviously, falls off a bit now due to multiple re roll usage. Quite like that. Both squares for these guys. Just trying, you know, because this is the weak part, isn't it? Around the edge. He really should have waited till, um. He's got this guy blocked, right? So that's just a turn ordering mistake. It looks like he's just been unlucky because he's failed the rush. But he was here. Now he could have failed a different part, to be fair. No, because he, he had to go around there, didn't he? So, to sort of not dodge. He, so, first of all, he added a dodge. What he could have done was just move this elf in and then block and then he was here so he goes one two three four five six seven wait he's already geified one but instead he, he so he cut the corner so he wouldn't have he wouldn't have cut the corner and he would have got there without cutting the corner which is fine right that's way better than doing a dodge that's a three percent fail a rush that's a 3% fail, and a third, like a third 2 plus that's also 3%, that also uses your reroll. So, basically he did three 2 pluses when he didn't need, he didn't need to do any. He could have been there and quite happy. And in addition, this guy would have been punched, maybe knocked over. This guy would have moved here safely. This one would have moved over here safely. This one would have moved across a bit. In fact, this one could have done the assist. Ball could have been up here. Just could have done so much instead of just thinking two pluses don't fail. So there you go. If you're an elf coach, two pluses can fail, believe it or not. And, um, yep. That's it, isn't it? That is the end of the game. It tries to it tries to zap the witch elf. Obviously, nothing's in range, so it's just going to run away to. Ensure there's no shenanigans of witch elf, like you know, insane amount of dodges, and then like witch elf blitz into filling all the squares to chain back and then chain forward. Like, you know, you don't need to do anything crazy if you just run away, you, you know, you're safe. So, yeah. And that's it, because it's progression as well. So, and um, right there, not progression, it's resurrection. So there you go, a 2-1 victory for Bright. Congratulations to Bright. Commiserations to Barking Mark. Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.